Slow dancing is not sold in stores. Please stay tuned to order. To order, call toll-free 1-800-257-1257. To save all COD charges and pay only $19.98 for records or cassettes or $24.98 for CDs, plus $4 shipping, use your credit card or send check or money order to Slow Dancing, P.O. Box 8250, Atlanta, Georgia. Remember, save COD charges by sending check or money order or use your credit card. This is CNN. This is a nice neighborhood, but a lot of people got the wrong idea about my neighborhood after the riots. A young resident gives us a tour of his Los Angeles neighborhood. What is life like after the riots? And the Seattle Mariners are just hours away from making baseball history. Welcome to News Hour. I'm Bobby Batista in Atlanta. And I'm Reed Collins in Washington. Out on the floor of the House at this hour, lawmakers are engaged in what's expected to be a hot emotional debate over the amendment that would require the federal budget to be balanced each and every year. President Bush and a group of Republicans are in support of this measure. But the critics say there's no need to amend the Constitution, saying that a law to balance the budget should be sufficient. Earlier today, lawmakers gave a preview of what's coming during the afternoon's debate. We need to get back to a balanced budget. Can you imagine what this country could do with $1.3 billion a day? Both Republicans and Democrats get reelected by taking home the bacon. Make no mistake, adoption of this misguided proposal will put the nail in the coffin of millions of Americans who rely on Social Security every day as the bulk of their financial existence. At what cost, Mr. Mr. Speaker, must we achieve this short-sighted so-called fiscal responsibility? We have seen it so many times during the course of the last 12 years, the implementation of heinous economic policies which at times seem to be nothing more than smoke screens to cloud the unrestrained cutting of our nation's social programs. I urge my colleagues on behalf of the children, the poor, and the elderly who so often fall on the cracks of such thoughtless policies to recognize the potential for the destruction of our nation's social security system. We're leaving a terrible legacy to the future generations of this country. And why? Because we don't have any guts. We haven't had any guts to make priorities a, a priority around this place. We have to make hard decisions. And since we can't do it on our own, we have to put some teeth into the Constitution to do it for us, to make us make those hard decisions. Several amendment options are going to be discussed during the debate, and the vote could be taken as soon as tomorrow. President Bush is threatening to veto a new bill to extend jobless benefits with unemployment at its highest level in nearly eight years. The House passed a bill yesterday extending up to 26 weeks of extra benefits to people who will soon run out of coverage. The president opposes the bill because it raises the deficit and increases employer taxes. The Repu uh, Republicans want Congress to vote on their compromise measure. On the campaign trail, Ross Perot gets a startling and disturbing review from a big city mayor. Perot, still an undeclared presidential candidate, met with five mayors in Dallas on Monday to discuss the urgent need to revitalize the nation's urban areas. One of those mayors, Cleveland's Michael White, came away with a word of warning. There's an historical parallel about where this country is and where another country was and where a, a leader out of nowhere came who said all the right things, who made all the people feel very good and ended up being a thousand percent different than what he was betrayed and only because nobody thought to check. They got so caught up in the rhetoric, so caught up in the jingles, so caught up in feeling strongly about the country again that no one decided to check on the payment. Are you referring to Adolf Hitler? I'm not referring to anyone. I'm just leaving the parallel for you to make your judgment. Now, you're not drawing a parallel between Hitler and Perot here, right? I didn't say I was doing that. <laughs> didn't say it at all. You said it. Well, Are you drawing that parallel? Uh, that was the implication from what oh, you said. I didn't make an implication. Well, I just said, all I said was, that I don't think it's right for this country to buy anything, whether it's a president or a car, uh, that they have very little understanding of and very little history on. Then who is the historical reference? You draw your own conclusion. Whether they know him well or not, more and more Americans do seem to favor Ross Perot in the race for the White House. The latest CNN Gallup poll has Perot leading with 39% of the vote, the president 31%, trailed by Democrat Bill Clinton with 25%. 
Other notes on the Perot phenomenon, his campaign headquarters in Virginia now doubts an intruder caused a computer file to be erased. Police were called in yesterday to investigate. Perot people now say they think an inexperienced staff member accidentally erased computer information on 17,000 supporters. In other matters dealing with the undeclared candidate, today's Washington Post says Perot once suggested using helicopters with infrared detectors to cruise residential neighborhoods for narcotics. This to fight a growing drug trade in Dallas. The former Washington, D.C. mayor, Marion Barry, reportedly is gearing up for yet another political campaign. Barry, released recently from prison after serving six months on a cocaine misdemeanor charge, is said to be sending out mailings now announcing his candidacy for a city council seat. The Washington Post says Barry characterizes himself in these mailings as an experienced leader. If he runs, Barry would challenge a one-time political ally. A first is expected today in U.S. Major League Sports. A group of investors led by the Japanese president of Nintendo is poised to buy baseball Seattle Mariners. Yesterday, a committee of the team owners recommended the sale. This should assure the yes vote by the majority of the owners today. Television evangelist Pat Robertson says now thanks, but no thanks to United Press International. After reviewing the books, Robertson announced today that he's radically changing his offer to buy the bankrupt news wire service UPI. Robertson says he now is interested in just buying one or two of UPI's assets, including that name. Continental Airlines is suing American Airlines, accusing its rival of predatory pricing aimed at driving competitors out of business. American, the nation's largest airline, rejects the allegations. It says its recent fare cuts are part of a plan to reverse huge losses and turn a profit. Continental is operating under bankruptcy protection. In its antitrust lawsuit, Continental asked for unspecified damages and a court order to stop American from offering cheap fares. Still to come on NewsHour, in about two minutes, firefighters gain the upper hand against forest fires in Oregon. We'll have an update. At about 11 past the hour, a visit with a young man who experienced the riots in Los Angeles. And at about 54 past the hour, we go to post-Soviet Moscow and peek inside the capital's first sex shop. Those reports and more when we come back. Crystal light, drench yourself in a wave of refreshment. Let it wash over you. Inside and out. Crystal Light. Refreshment for body and soul. If you don't get to sleep, I won't get to sleep. Nitol safely helps you fall asleep fast so you can get your Z's. Nitol or maximum strength Nitol. Nitol will help you get your Z's. Why are these people smiling? They've got new Polyden for partials with the power to clean the pearly part and the metal part. And the best part, it only takes five minutes. So get new Polyden for partials, unless you're already too good looking as it is. Business takes me from one end of the country to the other. So when I travel, I take along my Lanier Pocket Protégé. It lets me make excellent use of my time, no matter where I am. I can dictate letters, memos, and even reports so that when I get to where I'm going, I have time for the things I enjoy most. And if traffic holds me up, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. For more information, call 1-800-241-1706. Fingerman on location for the one and only Ziploc. Mmm, <sighs> freezer burn. That's a chilling thought. To protect your food, there is nothing like Ziploc brand freezer bags. Ziploc has the gripper zipper, the only bag with tough, tiny teeth. You can feel it gripping, so you know freshness is locked in, freezer burns locked out. That's a good feeling you only get from Ziploc. <laughs> I gotta get some gloves. For fresh food, there's only one Ziploc. After battling forest fires since Monday, Oregon firefighters have apparently gained the upper hand. The Sage Flat Fire, some three miles northeast of Sisters, has destroyed five homes and burned more than 1,000 acres of trees. It is expected to be contained tomorrow. No reports of injuries. 
A fire 10 miles west of Lapine is expected to be contained today, and another 60 miles east of Lakeview is under control. Officials say some of the more than 200 people evacuated from their homes would probably return today. The public defender for the man accused of killing five Florida college students says he will need about a million dollars from the state to defend his client. Danny Rowling was formally charged with murder yesterday in the 1990 killings. He entered a plea of not guilty. The five victims were students in Gainesville. Each was stabbed to death. Rowling faces five counts of first-degree murder, among other charges. He is now serving five life sentences for a string of robberies. Los Angeles Police Chief Daryl Gates has now taken his first official step toward retiring. This comes only days after the embattled Gates had threatened to stay on if some of the people he designated for promotions were not approved. But the 65-year-old Gates filed with the pension, uh, pension department yesterday. He's expected to get an annual pension of nearly $129,000. Calls for Gates' resignation were prompted partly by the Rodney King beating last year. And since the riots of Los Angeles in April, CNN's been trying to provide glimpses of how people have been affected. CNN's Ann McDermott caught up with one young man, and here is Nigel Campbell's view. My day really isn't that much different from the other kids. Usually I try to keep up on the news on just about every channel. Try to catch up on the election. My mom's already at work, so I say goodbye to my grandmother. I don't get a sugar? <laughs> Are you too big for sugar? Nah. <laughs> and I say goodbye to my dog when I leave. <laughs> Smokey. I named him Nap because he's real fast. And head for school. You need to go to school and you can't drop out or anything. Because when you get older, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. School is important to me and so is my neighborhood. But really, this is a nice neighborhood. <laughs> but a lot of people got the wrong idea about my neighborhood after the riots. Right behind me is the store that I used to go play video games at. The man here always said I couldn't get a refund because sometimes it could take your quarter. But now I can't be mad at him because the store is burnt down and I don't have a video game to go play at. <laughs> Whenever something goes on, you don't have to express your feelings with violence. You can protest in a peaceful, calmer way. Let me see your hands. I want everyone in place. And to the republic, for you know, I don't have any problem with people calling me you nigga or you black, dumb, stuff and all that. You know, I don't, nobody calls me that. You know, at my school, there are Hispanics, blacks, whites, you know, we, yeah, even some of the people I know are, you know, whites. You know, they don't have a problem. You know, I don't call them any racist uh, name or anything, and they don't call me one. You hungry, Nigel? The most important thing in my life right now is taking care of my mother, who had a heart attack last month. For a moment, I was thinking about becoming a neurologist, and, um, I'm really hoping on becoming an archaeologist. Well, if I don't reach my other goals, my, my last and goal that I really probably want to be is a journalist. Nigel Campbell reporting for CNN in Los Angeles. Coming up on NewsHour, we'll look at one man's drive to change the nation's often frustrating medical system. Never seen nothing like it. I mean, Rusty Slade was an ornery sort. Always ate his old bran flakes just for fiber. But one morning, I gave him Kellogg's new complete bran flakes. Weren't the same. More than fiber, they had whole grain wheat. Flakes were new too, crispy, crunchy. Why that Kellogg's complete bran flakes even had a better nutty taste. It was all so good, made Rusty smile. Almost. New Kellogg's complete bran flakes. Fiber and then some. When you travel a lot, one hotel begins to look like another. And it's hard to find a hotel. Order the enchanting sounds of instrumental magic today. Three records or two cassette tapes, only $19.95. Two compact discs, only $24.95. Here's how to order. To order, call toll-free 1-800-257-1257. That's 1-800-257-1257. 
or send $19.95 for records or cassettes, or $24.95 for two compact discs, plus $4 shipping and handling to Instrumental Magic, P.O. Box 8250, Atlanta, Georgia. This is CNN. Well, if I don't reach my other goals, my, my last and goal that I really probably want to be is a journalist. We ask a young man who lived through the L.A. riots to become a reporter for a day. Surgeons try to separate two sisters who were born joined at the chest. And a look at Moscow now. It seems Russians have shed more than just communism. This is Newsday. I'm Cheryl Atkinson. Lou Waters is on assignment. Kids and guns. It's a dangerous combination that threatens to tear apart the nation's inner cities. A new government report shows that gunfire is the most common cause of death for black American teenagers. And in Los Angeles, the statistics are especially bleak. Twelve-year-old Nigel Campbell comes from South Central L.A. He doesn't carry a gun, but he knows what's going on. We decided to let him describe what it's like out there. Here's his story. My day really isn't that much different from the other kids. Usually I try to keep up on the news on just about every channel. Try to catch up on the election. My mom's already at work, so I say goodbye to my grandmother. I don't get a sugar? <laughs> Are you too big for kids or something? Nah. <laughs> and I say goodbye to my dog when I leave. <laughs> Smokey. I named him that because he's real fast. And head for school. You need to go to school and you can't drop out or anything. Because when you get older, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. School is important to me and so is my neighborhood. But really, this is a nice neighborhood. <laughs> but a lot of people got the wrong idea about my neighborhood after the riot. Right behind me is the store that I used to go play video games at. The man here always said I couldn't get a refund because sometimes it could take your quarter. But now I can't be mad at him because the store is burnt down and I don't have a video game to go play at. Whenever something goes on, you don't have to express your feelings with violence. You can protest in a peaceful, calmer way. Let me see your hands. I want everyone in place. And to the Republic, for what you say, 